Hello, hello, beautiful people. Once again, my name is Patient Grace. I greet you all. Today, I'm going to talk about a very, very emotional topic. This topic is about refugees in general. But I'm going to talk more about the plight of African refugees. Both those who have reached the shores of Europe, those who are on their way, the wannabes, and unfortunately, those who have lost their lives on the coast of European countries. Bless their soul. Before I say what I want to say, I want you to please watch this video with me. Paying him, so he left. Different motivations, different causes for this crisis, but crisis it is, the second boat that arrived that day. For a moment, a sense that desperation would overrun the ship. Not for this man. Stay with me, okay? Look at me, look at me. Look at me. Not for this woman. Miles off the coast of Libya. The scale of what dawn. There are tough questions to answer here. Are these rescue missions part of the smugglers' business model? What of the politics of this? But for one woman on one boat, the crisis boils down to this. When the motorboats were out taking people from the sea, a strange window of trauma and quiet. Just the rustling of the foil blankets. This crisis is. <laughs> The thing about this crisis, the closer you get to it, the harder it is to make sense of why it's happening. Faith from Nigeria tried to with a hit. The scale. Are you okay? Tonight, the story of those rescued. Have you been to see the doctor? <laughs> what binds them all together? Their experience in Libya. People like that. People dying every day. Yeah, Libya is not good. God save our life. Because we don't have hope. You, if, if you die in the car inside, they they see you, they go shoot you. Every time they they shoot our blacks. That's why you go enter this boat. Most of you that watch this video with me want to cry. Or even cried. Because I did. I understand sometimes the reason why we Africans leave our beautiful countries to come to the West. Where we receive little or no love if we succeed to reach there. And one of the reasons is because of our useless leaders. I know that a lot of people have spoken about the uselessness of our leaders. But we will not give up. We won't stop talking about it until we see changes. Let's take Nigeria for example. Nigerian oil revenue worth billions of dollars annually. I'm not saying that they should be like the Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, or most of these Gulf countries. Simply because of the population in Nigeria as compared to most of these Gulf countries. But remember, 
Oil was discovered in Nigeria by Shea in 1956. That is over 60 years of oil revenue. Now, with this steady oil revenue, Nigeria would have provided the basic needs of our citizens. Such as education, employment, health, housing, and so forth. But because of these people here, an $18 million house in Asokoro, an affluent suburb in the Nigerian capital, Abuja. The furnishings inside are worth over $2 million, and it has a bulletproof gym. The government says it was bought with public money allegedly stolen by the former petroleum minister. It's part of the $10.3 billion worth of assets and cash recovered that had been stolen during the last And government. these ones here are the reason why over 80% of Nigerians are living today in abject poverty. <laughs> Shit! What? Take for example, the living condition of these Nigerians here. When Muhammad Buhari was elected as a president in Nigeria, I personally was jubilating, thinking that he would bring corruption in Nigeria under control because of his manifesto election promises. But little did I know that it will actually get worse. Now that being said, I want to now talk to the youth. Because our African proverb says that if you talk to the dog, you should also talk to the bone. This message is for the entire, is for the, is for the, the, the youth and the entire population of Africa. Corruption is flourishing in Africans today, in most of African countries today. Because the youth, the able men and women, are quick to run from their countries. Leaving the corrupt politicians to enjoy the dividends of their loot from the national treasure of most of these African countries. We can all agree that most African countries Whose youth, the able men and women, decides to stay in their country, are at the forefront of development today. I mean, rapid development. Take, for example, Botswana. You see how developed this country is? It's because the youth, the able men and women, decide to stay and fight corruption. Another example. This country is a country that I personally admire. Rwanda. Look what President Paul Gagami has done to Rwanda. With the help of the youth, the able men and women. We all saw and heard about the genocide between the Tutsi and Hutsi. Look where this country came from. From this. Nigeria 
Giant is a giant of Africa. Giants don't run. Giants stay and fight. Just like Professor Lomuba rightfully said, that the day Nigeria rises, that day the entire African will rise. So I'm asking all Nigerians to hold the ladder so that Nigeria will grow to her glory. And in turn, the entire Africa will follow suit. So ladies and gentlemen, youths, able men and women, let's hold the ladder for Africa to grow to its full potential. Let's stop running away. Let's stay to build our home, our Africa, our beautiful Africa. Don't forget, he who fights and runs away will live to fight another day. That is my message for you. Thank you. I love you all.